a recent video, I showed you how I made this cover out of another cover that I had made. And this was supposed to become my art journal, which then turned out to be too big. So I've been thinking about what I could use this for. And I think the best idea is to make an ephemera storage book out of it. This is going to be very simple. So if you want to see how I made this, please check out the video linked below. And the plan is to take this to the art journal festival that I am attending, or actually I have attended by the time you see this video. So I'm posting this video after the art journal festival, just because of the order of the videos I'm posting. I can't always film the videos in the right order that I'm posting them, but that's a whole nother story. <laughs> So I have cut eight pieces of white cardstock. These are 200 GSM. I think that should be plenty and I don't want to add a lot more because I don't want this to become super bulky. This is the fabric that I have left over from creating this cover. This is by the company eBond. So it's called Glyphs by eBond and I will link the German online store where you can find this below. And I need four strips. Usually I wouldn't use this part, but since I only have this piece here, <laughs> I need to use every scrap I have. So I'll first just cut it in half and then I'll tear each of these in half again. So you need one strip for every two pieces of cardstock. Obviously you could use some patterned cardstock as well, but I figure I don't want any distractions in the background. I want to see my ephemera, so that's why I'm choosing white. So we'll put these on the side for the moment because I think it's easier to do this next part before they are sewn together. Then I want to add some pockets here and I want them to be see-through. So I looked, what do I have at home? I didn't want to buy anything extra for it. And I found this folder here, which I don't actually use. And it has these beautiful clear pockets in here. These are actually glued in, so I cannot take them out so easily, but I can definitely cut them out. So I'll go ahead and cut a few of these out. So basically I'm making an updated version of this ephemera book that I made a long time ago. I will link the video of how I made this for you below. This is just made out of cardstock. I have three signatures and for this I used cardstock backgrounds as you can see. And I think it's very distracting, honestly. And I made a lot of smaller pockets for smaller ephemera and I don't really use this. But it might also be because I don't use this kind of ephemera anymore. I am not so sure what the reason is, but I'm not enjoying this book as much anymore. So I think this more modern version is more my style and I plan on making bigger pockets. So I hope this will motivate me to use it more. So I've cut eight of these sleeves. They are of course double sided. And I'm going to make the same pocket always for the front and the back, which will just make it easier with the sewing. I'm not sure how well they will hold up if you only glue it. And since I'll be sewing them, I think it's easiest to have the same on the front and the back so that I can just sew once and have the front and back attached. So now I just need to decide for each page what kind of pockets I want. Most of these are going to be large, but maybe for the first one, I'll start off with half-sized ones. So I will cut all the edges open because I'm going to use one side for the front and one side for the back anyway. So I'll mark where to cut. So I'll cut here and it's best to use a ballpoint pen. And then I check the width. It's going to be here. And then I'll make one pocket here. They don't have to be exactly the same size, the top and the bottom. Then I need a little bit of space between the pockets. So I have to keep that in mind. So I'll move that up a little bit to give me the space. And then I'll make the second pocket here. So I'll go ahead and cut that. So I just tried cutting this with my large guillotine and it does not like the plastic. <laughs> so I guess I'm going to have to cut all of this with my scissors. 
or if you have one of these cutting tools or just a craft knife, you can also do it like that. I know this is really hard to see, <laughs> but I have two and two, which are both the same. So I'll take two of these and put them to the side. They will go on the back side. And then I have two, which will go on the front here. And I'm going to actually mark where I'm going to glue these down because I want them to be the same on the front and the back. So in my case, I'll just use half a centimeter from the bottom and also half a centimeter from the top and also half a centimeter in from the left side. So then I'm going to take my art glitter glue I don't think it really matters which glue you use. I'm using this one because it has a fine nib. And since I'll be sewing anyway, I don't need a whole lot of glue there. So I'll glue that down. And I'll do the same one for the bottom. So I have these two pockets now and on the back side I need to measure the same but I need to measure the half centimeter from this side so that they line up here. I hope that makes sense. So I measure half a centimeter from the bottom, half centimeter from the top and half centimeter from the right side. Add my glue. and glue them as precisely as I can. So there's our first double page done and I'll continue in the same way for the other seven pages. And if while you're gluing it down, you're getting some glue in the middle of your pocket, then just take a ruler or a bone folder and then gently just make sure you have your plastic separated from the cardstock. So for this page, for example, I made the opening on the right side rather than on the top because for me it makes more sense to, to take the ephemera in and out from the side. And on this side, of course, then I have it on this side. And when you do them like me where you have the opening on this side, be sure that on the front you have it on the right side and on the back you need to have it on the left side. Otherwise you won't be able to get to your ephemera if you have them both on the right side. You know what I mean? <laughs> Another thing I want to mention is I'm not going too close to the edge that I'm going to bind because I want to leave some space for the fabric, of course. I'm just now remembering all these things while I'm gluing these down. So if it seems too daunting to place the front and the back pocket in the same position, then just do what I did here. Here I didn't worry about it because here I had papers i think i had yeah i had one like more regular paper and i had one piece of card stock and i just made the pockets on one side and then i sewed the paper onto the card stock so that it wouldn't matter so for example here i have three pockets but here i only have two so that way it's probably a lot easier than what i'm doing now also i would not use double-sided tape for this because first of all you have no wiggle room when you're trying to position it in the right spot and also i don't know how well your, your sewing machine is going to do sewing through that double-sided tape so i have all eight sheets ready to go i made two with the smaller pockets and six with the large pocket because i think the large pocket is a little bit more versatile because i can also put smaller pieces in there and they are a lot easier to make than the small ones <laughs> So once the glue has dried, I'm going to take this to my sewing machine and sew all around my pockets. And I'm going to choose a white thread because I don't think my stitching is going to be very neat. And I might have to stitch a few times to make sure that I have all sides on both sides where they need to be. So they are all sewn. And it actually worked out that I didn't have to sew twice or anything because apparently the measurements were good. So that was actually a lot easier than I thought it would be. 
I always made sure to go back and forth here and here on the open side of the pocket because of course that's going to get the most wear and tear. So next step is to adhere my strips of fabric onto the edges. So for these first two, I did not really pay attention to leaving the gap here, but I'm sure it's going to be okay anyway. So for this one, it doesn't really matter on which side I put the glue. I'll put it on this left side. I'm using my textile glue. You can also use PVA glue and I will thin it down a little bit. I'll just spray some water in here. Mix it up well. I'll turn this around. And I'll just add it here on the edge. And you could just do the glue. You don't have to sew, but I think I'll sew it also. So I want the other side to be this large pocket. Whoops, oh my goodness. Look what I just did, I spilled all my glue. No major damage, thank goodness. Okay, so this time it needs to go on this side. I'm going to leave just the tiniest gap here. So that's one, and I will do the same with the other three. So I have all four together. I also sewed along the edges here. Totally not necessary, I think. I think gluing would be enough, especially if you're going to use a thread that you can hardly see like I did. <laughs> you can see it a little bit here on the inside. And I'm going to sew each one in like a separate signature. You could also put one within the other and only have two signatures, but what you need to take into consideration then is that your edges won't line up and you will have to cut this unless that doesn't bother you. But I would rather have them each as a single signature. So I'm going to sew them in just like I would a journal. I've cut myself a template to fit the width of my spine. I'm going to mark top. And then I need to figure out my spacing. So I need four equal spaces in between. I am going to take my ruler to help me. So this is exactly four centimeters. The middle is at two centimeters. I'll do that in a pencil just in case I mess up. So I'll do half a centimeter, half a centimeter, and then one centimeter and one centimeter. That way I now have four signatures equal distance. I'll mark it here again, and then I'll just connect the lines. And then I'm going to do seven holes because I want to make sure it's really sturdy. So I need to figure out where my middle is. So I'll just fold that in half. And then I don't need the ruler because I know every box is half a centimeter. So I need three holes on each side of my middle line. So I think I'll do two centimeters. So one, two, three. No, that's overkill. Let's try three centimeters. One, two, three. One, two, three. Yeah, that makes more sense. Same thing on the other side. One, two, and three. So I'll go ahead and make all of my holes. So I'm making those where my lines cross. So then I'll put it back on my spine and I just need to punch the lines through my spine. And I'll just clamp this in place to make sure it doesn't move. These are the worst clamps to use for this. <laughs> we'll use some fancy paper clips. Always helps to use a piece of foam or something soft underneath. Oh. 
they are kind of hard to see so i think i'll make them a little bit bigger by just pushing through it all the way down and moving it around the hole a little bit that will make my life a whole lot easier when i sew in the signatures then i'm going to line up my first signature where those holes are and then i'll clamp the bottom page down so it doesn't move and then i'll take my awl and punch through the holes I'm not sure I will actually see them afterwards. Then I'm choosing this very bright pink thread to sew the signatures in. I think it goes really well with these circles. And I'm taking two and a half lengths of my book. So I need four of those, obviously. And I've learned in the meantime that you always should pull your embroidery thread from the middle, in case you don't know that either. <laughs> Otherwise, it will get completely tangled. I've struggled with that for years. <laughs> then I'll sew it in just like I would a regular journal signature. I'm going to start from the bottom, weave myself up and come back down and then knot them between the last and the second to last knot on the inside. So I'm starting off from the inside, going through the first hole and just weave up. So it does help to poke the holes. I do see them. That is super helpful. So once I come out the top hole, I just go back down into the same holes. As usual, making sure that I don't pierce my thread, otherwise I won't be able to pull it tight. So once I come out at this whole second from the bottom, I just make sure that it's nice and tight. I check here, there's nothing loose here, and then I just tie a square knot. Meaning once you go right over left, and then second time you go left over right. And make sure it's nice and tight. Hold your knot when you pull the second one. And then I just cut this off. And I will do the same thing for the other three. And then of course it's super annoying when one of your strands of your thread tears, like it did here. So I need to redo this last signature, yay. But I must say because you're only sewing through one layer of fabric, it is a lot quicker than sewing in journal pages. Okay, we did it. Yay. Let's look what it looks like from the spine. Yeah, that looks great. That's the top. And now we can start with the fun part, which is, of course, filling all of these pockets. Yay. <laughs> Unfortunately, it does mean I'm going to have to tear some of these down because this size will not fit in here. So I will do that first. By the way, all of these papers are copies of brayered papers that I made recently when I made my little art journal. So I will link that video for you below as well so you can see how I made these. And I'll kind of organize them by color, I guess, because there's too many to just fit in one pocket. Oh, I love this. How fun. So here I'll add more of the reds. So I'm using this for collage fodder rather than ephemera. These are all the small bits. These are all the very pink ones i'm sure i'll change these around with time but for now i'll do this and that way you'll see what it could look like then i have some purples here some of these are a bit wide i might 
tear those down a little bit more. These are some of the originals. I'll add those in here too. Then I have some smaller ones here. So I had some strips left over and I just punched into them for more interest. I am much more likely to use them like this. I also have this tulip punch. So these can go in these smaller pockets. I also have some in blues and grays. Then I have some die cuts here made out of the waste paper that I had to roll my brayer off. And I have these two fabric pieces. I'll just put them all in one. I also have this piece, which is just a piece of this paper bag. And I think I'll cut the rest up too, so I can use that easily. And I have some more smaller pieces here. These I think I'll add here. Here. Then I have these which are on kitchen towels. I don't even remember how I made those. I think I was experimenting with some masks, obviously. I, I don't remember. I cannot tell you, but I love them. So I will definitely use them on something. Then I have these random bits here. I have these larger pieces which I made using a master board and I think these should fit here. Yeah, that's perfect. I have these neutral ones which are actually from last year's Art Journal Festival. It's filling up quite quickly, I would say. I have some more random ones here. Some of these are made with stencils. Some of them are made with handmade stamps. Then I want to add my handmade tree stamped images on deli paper. Some bird stamps. And I'll add my bigger tree stamps here. Then I have a few more like random ones on packaging paper. These are all handmade stamps. I will link another video where I make some of these below as well. So I just changed my mind on organizing these. I think it makes sense to keep all the black ones together. And then I'll keep all of these like mustard colored ones in one pocket and I'll use one pocket for the bluish ones. I think that way I will find things easier when I'm looking for a certain color. And if they're too big, of course you can fold them instead of tearing them. Then I cut up this paper bag and I'll put all of these together in here. And then we have one left. For now, I'll just put these here, which are like colors I don't have anywhere else. As I said, I'll, I'm sure I'll be rearranging these. And in theory, I have another pocket here with a kind of useless belly band here. <laughs> so let's see what it looks like. It has definitely gotten fatter, so that's perfect. And this is, of course, now much nicer to take with me than to just have them all together in a pouch.
And because this is fabric here and not paper, and it has no glue where it bends, it just folds over super easily. Super happy with this. You can just tie it up. Has a fun little bill here. <laughs> and I am set. And if you haven't seen how I made this cute little art journal, then please see that video right here. Love you guys. Mwah, mwah.